In languages, we have um, a lot of uh, redundancy, and sometimes, uh, sometimes you you need the redundancy to emphasize something in the text. Uh, for example, a tiny little child. So you could say this tiny or little, but probably if you can emphasize it, if you by saying two words, and sometimes. Uh, in some uh, classical texts, there are um, uh, uh, you can find redundancy in text because they wanted to emphasize something. And uh, okay. Um, Another example is having redundant employees in a company. Now that used to be more common until this recent recession. So they got rid of their redundant employees or employees they thought were redundant. Uh, but uh, in many cases, in most cases, I think companies do need redundant employees. What happens if you have somebody, uh, if you have a single person who knows how a certain piece of some program works and he leaves the company and you have nobody to uh, uh, maintain that program so you need redundancy in uh, organizations. There's some good examples there. So coming back then. So let us uh, come back to uh, the D algorithm. Now, in order for us to, um, okay, so this is the fault we want to uh, test. And uh, now the excitation part is easy. This is a second one, so we want to get a zero there. And to get a zero, uh, there are a couple, uh, two, three ways we can do that. And one way would be we could have a one. Uh, and 2 equal to 1 and 0, so we get a d bar at node 5, and that is excitation. So we put a 1 there and a 0 there. Now at this point, that is actually a fairly easy to track what we are doing on the diagram, but just to uh, write it down systematically, let us uh, do it using a table. So I will have a little table here. Done, uh, when something like this is automated, then the computation is uh, somewhat similar to how we will do it using this table. And if you will uh, look at uh, some of the documentation on the algorithm, for example, there was this uh, document that uh, I have put on the course website, uh, which uh, talks about testing and has something about the algorithm. And formalism uh, can take a while to understand, but the basic idea is this. Uh, so initially, so let us assume this is the initial uh, step. So nodes one and two we have chosen to be one zero, and node five we have chosen to be d bar, and all other nodes at this point are unspecified. Okay, so now that we have a D, a D bar here, how can we uh, propagate this uh, out? And uh, now notice that uh, we could go this way or we could go this way. So let us try to pick path uh, 589. So let us try to do this way, propagate uh, this way, okay. So let us try to propagate it. And this is 
sort of an informal uh, notation. Basically what I mean is that let's try to propagate the error from 5 to 8 and let us see what that takes. And what, okay, so we have propagated from 5 to 8 and that is going to require <coughs> at line 6 a 0. Right? Okay, how about let's propagate it now from 8 to 9. And okay, so now we got the dbar here, and we want to propagate through nine, and we can do that, provided seven is one. So let's do that. We have reached the output, but of course that is the propagation, but uh, we still need to do justification. So this is the D drive. So this here was the D drive. But we don't know yet if this is going to work. It might. Let's, uh, let us justify the value of 7. We have a 1 there, but can we get a 1 by putting an appropriate value on line 4? So, this is a 1 here. That means you have a 0 here. This line is a D bar. So, to get a 0, a line 4 has to be a 0. Right? you agree so far? Okay. And now let us uh, justify the value on line 6 by putting something on line 3. This is easy. So line 6 is a 0. And that of course uh, we can easily justify by making this a 1. Okay, and now we need to justify line 4. We need to justify line 4 by uh, looking at uh, 1 and 2. And we see there that uh, oh, this, this was a 1. So line 4, because it is a 0, it requires a 0. But earlier we said it was a 1. Right? So here uh, we have a problem. So here we have uh, what we will refer to call an inconsistency. So this here we have an inconsistency. And that means we need to uh, backtrack. Okay, so when was the last time where we made a choice? Well, let's uh, go back and instead of trying to propagate it uh, this way, propagate it uh, this way and let us see if this will work okay so trying again so this is the next try so basically we backtrack and retry
Okay. From uh, five to uh, seven, let's try that. And five to seven. So this is not going to be a D because we have an inversion there. And uh, in order for us to uh, do that, we would have to uh, uh, get something on line four, which is a one. And now from seven, we want to go to nine. And we can do that provided on line eight, we have a one. Okay, maybe I should uh, double check, make sure I haven't made a mistake. Okay, that is the D drive here. That's the D drive. Okay, now justification. Let us see if we can justify. Okay, can we justify the value at line 8 by uh, picking an appropriate value on line 6? So, so we have chosen so far on uh, so far we have chosen this is one and this is zero. Those values are still the same. We have chosen line four to be a one, and we have chosen line eight to be a one. And we want to justify this eight. We want to bring a one here. Now notice we have a one here. Here you have a d-bar. So to have a 1 here, you need a 1 here. So line 6 needs to be a 1, and that will do what we wanted to do. And then line um, Okay, let's then uh, justify line 6 by using line 3. And that is, of course, easily done since we only have an inverter in between. Line 6 happens to be a 1, so line 3 only needs to be a 0. And uh, we uh, noticed that, uh, looking at other lines, uh, line 4 is uh, 1 on line 4 is justified by the values of on line 1 and 2. So there's no inconsistency there. So here we see that there is no inconsistency. So everything is justified. And uh, hence, we have a test. And the test is, it puts our lines uh, 1, 2, and 3. So a test is, uh, we don't know if this is the only test. But the promise of the algorithm is that if there is a test, you will find it. It doesn't claim that you are going to find all the tests. You will find all the tests if you keep uh, working on it. But our assumption is that once you have found a test, we stop. So this is the famous uh, D algorithm. And, uh, and notice, D algorithm uh, uh, goes around the problem of uh, uh, multiple paths by explicitly considering multiple paths. So if single paths don't work, then go ahead and try multiple paths. So you keep on trying until you find a uh, test. Notice that the algorithm is sort of like a search. You keep searching and searching until you find a test. Now uh, there are, uh, if you think about the algorithm, 